scrambling around a little bit. We're supposed to start getting some rain that's not going to stop for three or four days. Uh, it's not going to be a lot of rain, allegedly, but uh, it's about 90 to 100% chance. So that puts me in kind of a bind. As much as I got done this weekend, there's still a long list of things that need to get planted. And it's really ideal if you can plant things right before it rains because there's a lot less water usage from the pump. So I want to plant my corn. I'm in sort of a window now where I need to plant it. C certain varieties that I grow, like popcorn and some dry corn that I grow, have long seasons because not only do they have to mature fully, but they also have to dry fully on the stock, or at least as much as I can before frost. So let's get down to it. Carrying tools and a cup of coffee is kind of a science, or maybe an art, maybe both. I think I've got it. As long as Ziggy doesn't come charging at me, I shouldn't spill this coffee. When you're using this cedar, this is kind of why it was important to prep the beds a little bit and get the rocks out, because this is what makes your furrow, this little metal, uh, I don't know what it's called, shoot essentially, this is where the seeds come out, and this plows a little furrow for you, and this will catch anything that's in front of you and actually push the soil out so that the chain can't bring it back in. Spilled a little bit of coffee on this. I don't want to set my seeds on it. I've got quite a few things that I'd like to plant this year. Uh, I've been trying this new one from Seed Savers Exchange, Bloody Butcher. That looked cool. Uh, total impulse buy at the register. Uh, I've got some early flint corn that I've been saving. Painted mountain corn. Uh, robust 997 popcorn, which comes from Johnny's. This is a really great popcorn. And then uh, my sweet corn is sugar buns, which the kids think is hilarious. It's really tasty, but I feel like I'd grow it even if it wasn't because anything that makes Martin giggle like the word sugar buns is worth the effort. Anyway, first I'm gonna plant my popcorn. I've got this, which is seeds that I saved from corn that I grew. So that's still got some chaff and things in it from hand threshing the corn, just pieces of the cob. So I want to try to get that out of there so it doesn't jam up the cedar. I'm going to set this down a little bit, sort of rode up on me a little bit over the course of planting peas and beans. So I'm going to drop it down to an inch and a half. So there's a lot to watch, a lot going on on one of these cedars. This one, the earthway is actually not that bad. The six row cedar, which I'm hoping I get out in time to beat the rain and plant carrots, is a lot more complicated. But basically, you have to watch to make sure, first of all, that you're not going crooked. There's actually a mechanism on this that is designed to allow you to set where your previous row was and go a certain distance from that. It's a serious design flaw from earthway and they have acknowledged it, but they haven't come up with a solution to it. Uh, that's what this little gizmo here is for. Essentially, that's just an, it's an arm that bolts onto this and it swings one way or the other and it's got a little marker on the end of it and you're supposed to be able to go parallel to previous rows. This is what's supposed to grab the arm when you're not using it. The problem is this clip doesn't hold the arm and uh, so it just flops around. Their solution to that is to send you an elastic band, which was very frustrating. Um, I'm hoping that they're working on it because this is a fantastic tool, but that design flaw makes that part completely useless, but it would be helpful. So I'm hoping that they're coming up with a better clip that actually holds the, or some sort of other clip system that actually holds the arm up. So anyway, because I don't have that, I have to sort of eyeball to keep my rows the same distance so that I'm not turning this way. The other thing that I have to do is make sure that the seeds are going into the pockets, that they're leaving the pockets inside the chute and not popping out. Sometimes if you have the wrong plate on, or if you have a seed that's a little bit too big, it will skip the hole and pop out. You have to watch that. 
you have to watch to make sure your seeds are coming out of the chute because sometimes they'll actually get bridged inside here and you have seeds that are disappearing but they're not coming out and then you don't know that until your seeds don't germinate and by then especially with something like corn it might be seven days before this comes up and by then it's too late to plant corn at this point so it's really important to make sure the seeds are coming out and then also that the the chain is actually covering the seeds back over so there's a lot to pay attention to when you're planting and again this one's actually less complicated than the six row cedar Don't even think about it, Ziggy. Just stay out. Out. I'm gonna try this Bloody Butcher from Seed Savers Exchange. It's a terrible name, but a really cool looking corn. So sometimes this happens where this is actually a popcorn plate. There is no corn plate, or at least I don't have it. So this um, Bloody Butcher corn from Seed Saver Exchange is not gonna fit into that plate and come out. So I'm gonna need to find another plate that, oh no, that will fit. I just dropped three seeds. I'm not leaving those there. There's not many in that packet, so I wanna plant them all where I want them. Got them. Luckily, they're bright red. That was easy. I've never grown this variety before. I didn't know how big it was or what plate to use, so I've got to be a little flexible. Put the beet plate on. See what happens. So this is even too big for the beet plate, some of these kernels. So I'm going to drop them in behind the furrow as I go or any that skip. So, this plate isn't working very well. I managed to do one row, but not very efficiently. So, what I'm gonna do is, I use the cedar to mark a row, but didn't push down on the wheel, so it didn't tamp it in. So, just a handful, I'm gonna go and plant the second row by hand. This is probably way faster than what I just did. It's important not to be so married to a technique or a method of doing something that you do it to the exclusion of common sense. So the Earthway Cedar is a great tool. There's no question about that. But it just happens that I got a corn variety this year that I don't have a plate that seems to work well. So rather than try to mess with it for 20, 30 minutes, it makes much more sense just to put those in by hand. That was probably, I don't know, 20 seeds, and it took me far less time to plant that row than it did the previous row. So it's important to pay attention to stuff like that so you don't become a big time waster. I need to go get a couple of signs now that I've got two varieties in. I'll never remember which varieties where. So I'm gonna go grab those signs before I plant anything else. I actually already have my popcorn sign here. But I didn't bring my pencil. Diggy, ah, get out, out. You're walking literally right on the line of the cord. Out, get out. I'm gonna put up an electric fence around my corn. Bloody fool dog. Ah. All right, just started to rain. I felt two drops, so I need to get going. I'm not going to get to plant the carrots right now, but that's all right. 
I don't use a lot of fresh carrots. I grow mostly for storage. So I can plant those a little bit later. Though I do want some fresh in the summer. So hopefully it won't rain super hard for three days. Or if it does, it'll dry out quickly over there. But at any rate, I want to get this corn planted so I can go in, get to work, and get out of the rain. Come on. So the only purpose for this row cover, it's going to be here for maybe two weeks, is to protect the corn from the crows. They won't come down and pick through it. For some reason, they're afraid of it, whatever, it worked. But if I don't put this over here, I just fed crows, basically. All right, so I don't have enough row cover to cover these two rows of sweet corn that I did in the planting. I'm hoping this is too much of a confined space. The crows don't like the row cover moving around. I think that's why, I don't know. Uh, and I'm hoping they won't come in between the row cover and the hay bales. Diggy, get out. Thank you. To get these two rows of sweet corn. Let's see, I'm going to have to probably come charging out here, waving my arms like a crazy person several times for the next couple weeks. Or maybe once it starts raining, I'll come out and cut a new piece and just triple it over and cover that over. Mm -hmm. 